anglais, je pense, mais je suis complètement bilingue, donc je peux prendre des questions en français ou même... Euh, ben, en tout cas, je vais parler en anglais, j'ai décidé. <laughs> so, I will talk about electronic textiles, which is a really large field. I don't know if we could have my slides, please. Which is a really large field that encompasses everything from lots of artistic practice to hardcore military research and everything in between. Um, I'm going to talk about this dichotomy, this opposition in my own work, which is between the work that I do for industry and the work that I do as a sort of artistic practice. And in a way, it can also be uh, deline delineated as quantified versus qualified, and you'll see what I mean by that. I was just thinking after um, Lynn mentioned at the end this idea of art perhaps being political, design, not necessarily. We were just talking during the break, you know, there are many different kinds of design. I situate my work within what we call design art, and it's uh, perhaps just like a way of not having to, <laughs> you know, decide, not having to um, accept either one of the two labels, but it also has a tradition at Concordia University, the department in which I teach was called for many, many years the design art department. I think part of that is a bit of an identity crisis since we are in the faculty of fine arts and trying to situate design practice within a fine arts type practice where the convergences are, where the different uh, possibilities for either politicizing the work or creating different um, experimental approaches to what design might be. And there's all kinds of practices that come from different traditions, different places. So interrogative design that Krzysztof Wojcicko was pushing at MIT when I was a student there 20 years ago. All kinds of conceptual design practices, critical design, or the speculative design tradition that comes out of the UK. So there are many different flirtations, if I can say it that way, that the world of design has with the world of art. The work that I do at Concordia, I actually call it design research, sometimes I call it design art, and basically we look at integrating new technologies into old technologies. So integrating these different electronic technologies, different kinds of material technologies, fibers that have uh, specific electromechanical properties into the old technologies of textiles. And just to go back to the last slide, most of the work that I do is around experimenting with these materials and these technologies, okay? What we do is looking at what happens to materiality once we make it interactive. So a piece of fabric, a piece of textile, once it's embedded with sensors and actuators, how does that materiality change from a point of view of designing with it, interacting with it, using it? Um, and I've done a lot of work with making textiles change shape, change color, et cetera, et cetera. At the same time, I've also been working throughout my career, but especially in the last five years with industry. So in the last five years, I've been working with a Montreal company called OmSignal, where we've basically developed uh, intellectual property, which is very much an industry term. We've developed the technology for integrating sensors uh, directly into the textiles. So we had a really big product with Ralph Lauren a couple of years ago. Basically this shirt that tracks your full heart signal. So it's not just a heart rate like the Fitbit or other wearable devices that you might have heard of, but a medical grade heart rate, as well as your breathing, the depth of your breathing, the speed of your breathing, as a way of then um, having a closer insight into your physical state, so it's basically biometric information, and specifically geared towards training, towards sports, as you can see from um, 
the slide. It was launched at the US Open, the tennis championship in New York two years ago. So it was very much aimed at giving athletes a better understanding of what's happening in their bodies. We also have a product for women. And the long-term vision of this company is that uh, the future of undergarments or the future of clothes will be digital. Just like the f our cars right now have all kinds of sensors in them and actuators and the windows go up and down on their own and they stay within the lane on the highway. And we didn't notice it happening over the last 20 years. You know, 20 years ago you had a mechanical car, now we all have electronic cars. It wasn't a revolution, it was a very slow progress. The same thing is going to happen with clothes. High-end clothes already have different kinds of electronic tags in them for authentication. You know, there's, it's going to happen slowly and seamlessly, and our clothes will have sensors in them by the time my little baby, who's now nine months old, is a teenager. <laughs> most of her clothes will have some kind of electronics in them. The long-term vision, you know, and this is the utopic vision, there's of course a huge dystopic scenario, which even with cars people talk about with the Internet of Things and our cars being tracked by police, etc., etc., our cars being online. But the utopic scenario <laughs> is that these clothes will allow us to have a better understanding not just of our fitness when we're exercising, but also our stress level, our wellness, our mindfulness. So, uh, you know, this idea of this very stereotypical businessman knowing when he's stressed and the message going to his wife who happens to be pregnant, so she's going to a yoga class uh, and she, you know, sends him a text, honey, take a deep breath, then she gets another message that her father is, uh, his heart rate is very high. Um, so they're in the hospital and in the very kind of happy denouement of the whole story, uh, they're also able to listen to the heartbeat of her unborn child. You know, so this is very much coming from a tradition of industrial uh, advertising, this is a video that we created for uh, raising venture capital money, so it plays with a lot of the stereotypes inherent in the industry. Uh, all the venture capitalists, or I shouldn't say all, but 99% of the venture capitalists I've met in my life are men, and they're men from a specific socioeconomic group and class, and they sponsor a very specific kind of product. Uh, so the sorts of technology designs that are being developed by startup companies are very much tied to the demographics and the socioeconomic demographics specifically and gender of uh, the venture capitalists who are funding this stuff, right? It's still a very cool technology. Um, we're able to integrate the sensors directly into the textiles, and as I mentioned at the beginning, this idea of old technology and new technology, what's great about textiles is there's lots of old technology there. So the shirts also help you have a better posture, there's antimicrobial treatment, they're machine washable, it gives you what's called performance compression. So these are like really cool technologies, old and new. We're also, you know, what we did with this shirt is to be able to use existing manufacturing. So just by using these different kinds of silver threads and other kinds of high-tech threads and putting them into the production stream, we were able to use existing factories in Sri Lanka to produce these shirts in a way that enables this utopic slash dystopic version of the future, where if we're all wearing this stuff, there will be great potential and great dangers in what's called crowdsourcing health and wellness, right? Into having insights into the health and biometrics of a whole population. Is that happening right now with our cars? Maybe. It's happening with our homes. Google bought uh, technology for home thermostats, for those of you who don't follow the tech news. 
I'm actually curious, how many of you know that Google bought this technology for home thermostats? Okay. <laughs> you know, so Google also has now started a program for wearables. Google tried to hire me two years ago to lead their program on wearables and biometrics. So this future is coming, okay? Uh, they want to farm, to mine this information about what's happening inside our bodies the same way that they mine where we are through Google Maps on our phones. I mean, Google knows where I am right now, right? My husband doesn't even know where I am right now. Um, so th this is happening. This is coming. And there is great potential, but there's also a great space for activism and for the kind of political practices that Lynn and, of course, everybody is aware of. So this is what I try to do to a certain extent in my uh, art practice. So I look, be, you know, so I'm very proud of these technologies that I've developed, the fact that it can be manufactured, the fact that we've launched products. But as a researcher at Concordia University, working within this design art context, I'm really able to ask some of the more um, politicized kinds of questions, right? And to look beyond the quantified, not just measuring performance, but look at what does this mean for human experience? How does this change or extend the meaning of uh, what we put on our bodies, right? So for example, some of the work that we do deals very much with memory. I'm personally really shocked about the fact that a lot of people don't think about the fact that their phones have a memory of their location, about the fact that their cars have a memory of their location. Um, and if we move these memories onto our garments, the only way to really begin the dialogue is to visualize it. People respond really well when they see something in a visual way. So, for example, the way that we do this is, you know, we ask a question, what does it mean for our clothes to have memory? And then I just do a whole bunch of uh, sketches. I call these sketches, okay? So then I produced... Uh, dozens of these dresses. We have this really cool textile printer at Concordia. So I just printed out the textile patterns with different handprints. And then we look at the narratives, right? So if this dress has a memory of its history of touch in this specific place, what are the stories here? So Shirley, Shirley's narrative is she's a very self-conscious girl who maybe is trying to lose weight and she keeps saying, am I too fat in this? Am I, do I look okay? Is my makeup okay? And you know, the reason I'm presenting this narrative, it's a very private narrative, right? It's not a narrative that you would necessarily want to share with the rest of the world. Here we have Hannah, and Hannah's narrative is very different. First of all, it implies the presence of another body because of the position of the hands, and it's also a very sexual narrative because of where the history of touch happened on the body. So we start by doing these kinds of sketches, and then we explore different sorts of materials, so thermochromic materials. We look at different electronic uh, sensors that we can embroider or integrate into garments. So these are called the intimate memory shirt and skirt, you know, and these, you know, since the panel talks about dissemination, this was shown at the Victoria and Albert Museum in an exhibit, this was about 10 years ago, in an exhibit called touch me, I think. It, it dealt with touch and this idea of interactivity and objects of design and art that needed to be touched in order to reveal some kind of deeper questioning. Um, I also look at different kinds of materials that we can embed in garments, materials that come from other industries. So for example, working with a shape memory alloy called nitinol, which changes shape with a change in temperature, we can create garments that open, that move, that have these different relationships to the body. Um, I think this should play. Oh, I actually paused it. 
So you see the opening and the closing of these little uh, petals here. The idea is that garments might potentially inhabit your bodies like parasites and open and close, and it starts to ask a lot of questions about personal space versus public space, agency, et cetera, et cetera. So we create collections around these technologies as a way of then speculating about the future of the technologies, uh, asking questions about how this might affect social, cultural, and economic futures. Uh, another project that we uh, created, this is called Captain Electric and Battery Boy, and it deals specifically with questions of energy or power. So these are dresses that leverage the history of garments or history of fashion as often having relationships with discomfort. So this one is called Itchy, and it has a lot, uh, they're, all, they're called Itchy, Sticky, and Stiff. So this one is called Itchy, and it has all of these really itchy collars around your uh, neck. And as you start to move them, because you want to scratch yourself, you actually begin to generate energy for your garment. And this is my student. They're very upset with me, usually, when I make them do videos. Uh, <laughs> but it demonstrates the concept. In my work, I also like to uh, question the current state of technology and develop, so not only misuse technology, so what I showed you here is examples of perhaps misusing. So we use technology, we misuse technology, but I also am interested in inventing the next generation of technologies. And specifically to move beyond current electronic components and to actually move as much of that functionality as possible possible into fibers. So currently we work with commercially available functional fibers such as silver fibers that can create different kinds of sensors in textiles. So this is a woven textile uh, that's the size of the scene of the stage that dancers can interact with to trigger different sound and uh, video events on stage. Here I'm working with different kinds of conductive threads that have resistance with a thermochromic ink to create heat in the textile to make the textile change color. But I'm also going beyond that and I've been collaborating um, with this dude called Maxime Skorobogati. He's, um, he's a researcher at the Polytechnique at the um, um, Université de Montréal a project that I called Karma Chameleon, to actually develop the next generation of fibers that can transmit light, change color. We've developed a technology for capacitors um, in a fiber format, used this technique that he patented, where we co-roll these preforms made out of different polymers, and then heat them and pull them, draw them into long fibers, where the different polymers begin to interact at a nanoscale, and in effect, this creates a capacitor. We've developed our own flexible energy storage textile, etc. And uh, to wrap up, once we develop these kinds of new fibers, what does this mean for design? So then I also work with students, with interns, with collaborators to imagine the future of materiality where textiles really won't just be like, oh look, I'm wearing a dress and when you push here this changes color or when I sit down it turns blue or when I get an email it blinks. But to actually look at the future of these materials um, as something that can be programmed by cutting it, by shaping it. And where every garment, everything that we wear on our bodies will become a performance of sorts. So it will no longer be a static object with one interaction, but it will change shape, change color, and um, communicate in ways that we can only imagine in a actual theater performance right now of the Cirque du Soleil, right? So I work with different designers and, uh, and artists to ask them to develop garments that can have these much more substantial changes. So they design 
several garments, but they are actually the same piece at different moments in time, okay? So you see here, uh, this is a piece by Tala Burks, who was a master's design from the fashion program at Ryerson. Um, so she designed these two different moments in time where the shoulders become more stiff, the colors change a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. This is a project by Lauren Osmond, who similarly conceptualized this garment at different moments in time. And finally, a collaboration um, with uh, Christine Charlebois, who worked with me a couple of years ago, who's a fantastic Montreal fashion designer, to also imagine the future of fashion design and what that would mean. So, uh, in conclusion, I'm, you know, looking forward to a world where investors will realize that there's much more than this, and these kinds of more speculative, more um, poetic kinds of applications of electronic textiles and wearable technologies will become possible. And uh, I think a few of us on this panel have these hybrid kinds of practices where there is an industrial presence, there is an artistic presence, there's a design presence, and we're trying to reconcile all of these aspects of our practices, which is extremely important to ensure that the future of this discipline remains meaningful, I think. So thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.